welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to do another part of the Go Trek series. Um, I actually don't know which one this one is, actually. Uh, one, two, three. So this probably part four, I resume. So I'm, I'm trying to get the, uh, the camera a little bit better quality, um, increasing the resolution on the, uh, the camera. Uh, so let's see how this one actually works. Uh, got lots of cool stuff planned uh, as well for the channel and a couple of stuff for the the uh, the Patreon page. But what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to be doing the trousers. Obviously, ideally, what I should have done is I should have kept this off the the axe off um, because obviously it would have been a little bit easier to get in and around in here. So what I'll be doing is I'll be doing a lot of the fiddly work off camera. Um, and then hopefully next week I, I plan to get the boots done. So I can actually get the last of the metallics finished. And then I can start on the base because I'm going to be entering this guy into a painting masterclass at next month's Ulster Open. Um, so I would like to do quite well at it. And I'm going to hopefully be able to get in. So what we're going to do is first things first, I'll run through the paints. Um, so I've got some um, Canto Blue, some Lothorian Blue, some uh, Grey Seer, which you can't really see on the palette, um, some Uthwan Grey, some Rust Grey, and some White Acrylic Ink. So what I'm going to do is, first things first, a little bit of water, and then I'm going to, I'll zoom in a little bit. And then we'll just get the focus right. And then I'm going to cover the whole of the trousers in blue. Right. But as I say, now what I should have done is really should have had this miniature split down into a lot more sub-assemblies than what than just him. I, I wasn't really originally planning to do a series like this with him. Uh, I was just going to use him for a, an army, but I don't actually own a... Uh, I don't actually own a older army. So having him for gaming is a little bit pointless at the moment. So we're gonna put try to put the white stripes on. Obviously, easier said than done. And I think I might add some texture into the cloth as well. All right. So. Just get the inside of the legs. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump forward. I'm going to get a couple of um, layers. So I've got a solid layer of blue. And then we'll get back. Be right back. All right. So that's me got a solid coat on there of blue. It's looking a little bit better. So there you go. So what I'm going to do now, it's going to take some grace here. There's a little bit of it still wet here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some stripes. The first stripe is going to come down the base and the middle of his bum. All right. And then I'm going to work on this one here. And what I'll do is I'll cut away and I'll get it all done. And I'll, and I'll have to, I'll probably have to adjust it. So I'll probably do that off camera rather than doing it on camera. And then... So I'll be putting the first one here in and then doing this one here and I'll color it in. And then once I've got all the stripes in place, we'll come back and then we'll start doing some, start building up the highlights. All right. So let's start. So we're getting some thinned grace here. What we want is just put a line. You can just see. Straight down, like so. 
just a thin line. And what we want to do, a little bit more, we just want to, this is extremely difficult on camera. Just do another one, like so, and then just extend this one out. Like so, and then what we do is we block it in. All right. And the reason why we do the blue first is because we, it'll be easier to tidy up with the blue than it would be with the the sort of grey. Even though we are using grey here, which is a really good base paint, it the the it's easier to cover with the the Canto blue because the Canto blue is a better colour. So just flip it upside down if you need to. Just to strengthen that. And the good thing is if you put the stripe here, it's because the stripe would go all the way around, but you can't see it because of the loincloth. So you don't really need to worry about that. All right. So just let those layers dry, and then we'll come back in a couple of minutes, and then we'll, that'll be fully done. So now the next one. So what you want to do, uh, an even space. So I reckon probably starting about here to about here. Now this part of the leg is going to be a little bit weird because his leg isn't completely straight. It kind of comes off. So you want to move this down like that. So start off the angle of where the top of it would be and then just bring it down and then Follow the shape of the leg. Right, and you're using nice. I'm using my uh, my zero brush from Art Sobel, uh, and you just want to bring it down like so. And again, you just want to sort of curve it because the fabric isn't in a straight line at the moment, and like so. Doesn't, don't worry too much about having a big thick line because you're going to be filling that in. All right. And then just fill it in once you're happy with it. All right, so there you go. So you started getting the, the stripes on. And you can, you can have them thick, you can have them thin, it's completely up to you. You know, it doesn't... Just, just thin it out. Again, off camera what I'll do is I'll, I'll thicken them all up. And then tidy up. And if you do need a tidy, I'll just, exp just show it here. If you just do need a tidy, what you can do is just get some kind of blue and just run down the edges just to tidy up. Alright. And then what the front one, a little bit more trickier because you've got the beard. So what you want is probably about here. So just sort of mark it out with a little line of where you want it. And then I would say just bring that line down and then like so. Now he's got nothing underneath that foot, so you just if you are doing this, just make sure that the, the miniatures on the on the base properly. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump forward and I get all of these blocked in and then I'll be back once that's done. All right. So got the stripes in, do a little bit of clean up. All right. In hindsight, I would definitely, if I ever painted this miniature again, not have that axe there 
so you get completely round and the strikes would be a lot better so what I'm going to do is what we need to do now is we need to start highlighting so we're going to start highlighting the blue first so we get some of our our, our canto blue base and then we act and a little bit of the Thorian blue. And use the same brush, just down here. What we want is I'll zoom in a little bit for this actually. Put the light down so the light's a little bit better. Okay, so what we want to do is we just want to stipple this highlight and my table wobbles. Most annoying. So I'll just do that. What you'll find is after a while, you'll get the texture start building up. It's going to take a while, but we you want you're essentially you're just stippling in where the light is going to be hitting. The mini. You're not going to go all the way around. You're not going to go all the way into this part underneath the leg. You're just going to stick to where the light would hit. So if we go down to here on this side here so you, the, as you can see there's like a little bit of an indentation here where the, the, the light comes in so just following the contours of the model and just a little bit on top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and do this on all of the model and then I'll be right back okay so I've done the first layer of stippling and just kept it on. Can't really see it because it's quite it's quite light. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna add a little bit more Lothorian blue to the Cordian uh the Cordian, the Cantor blue. And then what I'm gonna do is just to make sure it's quite runny, and get your nice brush, and then again just stipple it on. And then essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be building up these highlights with the different stipples. So what, what it will do is it will leave the other colours underneath and you'll sort of slowly start building the texture up. So what essentially you want... Like that, you see. So you'll start seeing like this highlight here. Just follow that crease. All right, and then the same as this. So you'll start seeing that highlight start showing up now. And you can start seeing this crease here that's just underneath his arse popping out. And that'll get more prominent as we put some more highlights on. Okay, so I'm going to jump forward. 
get this done on the rest of the model and I'll be right back. Okay, so instead of me stippling for the next hour and allowing you basically to see each stage by stage, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've basically brought up all the highlights on the blue. So you can kind of see it there. Um, but I'll, I'll have pictures over on the Facebook page for you to, to see what I'm going to be doing. So for the white, what we're going to be doing is something a little bit different first. Because we need to get the shadows in before we we do anything else. So what I'm going to do with the with the with the white, we're going to get some rust grey, and what we're going to do is just we're going to glaze where the shadows are. All right. That'll just allow. For us to know where the definition needs to be so just get a glaze and just any of the creases that you see and all of this area here you, you do, just shadow shade all that down with some progressive glazes of rust gray okay and that'll really start to make the white stand out a little bit easier. And it'll just make this next stage a little bit easier for us to do. Because we're going to be mixing some of the rust grey into the base coat. Um, and just adding some, some shades. Okay, so just around the knee area here. And then just up here as well. So I'm going to, oh, that's actually, don't even worry, just get this bit, last bit done. So again, just get those glazes in on the, on the blue, oh, sorry, on the white areas. Just to sort of get those shaded. So you, you'll sort of start seeing it like that now. All right. You can sort of see it better with the ones in the back. All right, and that just brings it out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get some Uthwan Grey. And we're just going to, again, stipple. So we'll start here. So because we've already marked out where, where our shadows are going to be, this is a little bit easier. You just bring it across. All right, you're not really gonna see it. Try to get it on the camera because cause it. For so I need a battle lamp. Um, zoom out a little bit more. There you go. Right, let's see if that works a little bit better. You'll slowly start seeing that coming up. And you just want to go into the, you don't want to do too much into the shaded area, just a, a little bit. Essentially, you just want to bring it up. And if your paint's thin enough, it'll slowly start building that transition up. Just thin my paint down a little bit more. So all right. So I, I'm gonna do the rest of this color, and then we'll start moving into some more of the prominent highlights. Hello, right. So what I've done is 
I like, I've continued stippling with the white and added a little bit more highlight on. So you start to see how it's sort of building up. All right. Can't really see much there, but you can sort of see it sort of in and around this area here. So what I'm gonna do is, all I've done is I've added my acrylic white ink. Now you bear in mind, if you are using this white ink, and if anyone wants to know which one I'm using, it's this stuff here. Be very, very careful with it. This stuff is super strong. So a, a, a little bit is all you need for your, to, for your mix. And then just back in with some stippling and mainly concentrating this highlight for the white around the edges and to the most prominent points. And the good thing with the blue and the white is you get like a little bit of contrast between the light and the dark. And so you've you've got like a bit of a dark line sort of coming in here. And it adds a little bit more contrast as well. Right, so you just bring that right up. And white is quite difficult to do. Um, because obviously you can't, you, you're working off more of a, an off grey than white. But what I'll do is I'll finish the highlights on the rest of the part. What I want to do is I want to do some shadows. So I'll get a little bit of your rust grey and get a little bit of your celestial grey base coat. Keep it quite thin and then just... In your, in your deeper shadows, just start stippling this in. Like so. Like that. This will just add a little bit more shadow to it. Just... To, a little bit of texture in. So once you've once you're happy enough with that, what I would then do is get some thin white ink and just at the very top just a little edge highlight along the top edge. Just along the top edge here. You're going to put some blue edge highlights in anyway. And then the same as here as well. Just all on the bottom. Where that edge is. And all on the top here. And all that's doing is just defining the, the edges. And what you can do with your blue Again, just a very small, thin edge highlight. Just up there. And just here. Again, just along the top of the trousers. You can bring it down if you want. I'm just putting the edge highlights in this. We'll we'll sort of just finish this. We'll just finish this off. I'll do is I'm gonna go around and finish everything off and then I'll show you when it's done be right back and that's him done so what I've done is I've gone in 
and I've highlighted all of the, the areas. So let's just zoom in and let you see. So you can see the texture. You can see how it's textured so it doesn't look like the rest and it sort of stands out really cool. Pardon me. I've added some glazes and a couple of, of, of little highlights. Alright. So that is the legs done. So what I'm going to do next is we'll do a video if you want on the leather. I'm going to do some nice textured leather on the um, on the boots, uh, similar to a little bit similar to how I've already done the belt, and then that'll give me time to start working on the the metallic areas and this area here. I'll probably do the axe head in one separate video. This part will all be done, or I might do a little video on this area and then the axe head. But I'll do all the rest of the metallics. This bit is pretty much going to be the same as how I do the axe head. So all in all, um, I think he's come along really well. I think he's really starting to look good. And I'm really, really, I've been really, really enjoying him actually. Still be tempted to actually, you know, get another one and paint him up and use him. Because he's such a, a, a brilliant, lovely little model. But I'm glad you like it. Um, there is... More coming to the channel, uh, a couple more tutorials coming up and as well as a, a new Space Marine uh, series is going to be getting started very shortly. Uh, so if you've got any suggestions or any cool sort of chapters that you'd like to see for that, fire them down in the comments or over on the Facebook page or 8 Pointed Star Painting. Um, as then, like and uh, like that page if you, if you like what I'm doing. If you like what I'm doing on YouTube, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, ring that bell so you're notified um, when I, I, I post up new updates. And I'm going to be doing a video on how I'm changing my Patreon. But as a quick outline, you can jump over to Patreon if you want to support the video uh, and the channel. Um, and you'll be getting exclusive content, more in-depth content. Uh, one of the things that will be coming is an in-depth look at colour theory using my cool... Um, color wheel which I often use so again thank you very much for all the support and I will see you in the next one goodbye